Well, hey guys, going to do a video today about equivalent series resistance in capacitors, also known as ESR, and why you want to use them in certain demanding situations, such as filtering and switch mode power supplies, and supply bypass capacitors. Certain types of capacitors certainly work better than others. Well, first I had to set up a circuit because, well, I don't have a function generator. Well, I do have one, but it's a piece of junk. I needed 250 kilohertz square waves that look nice and clean. So I just decided to use a uh, microcontroller. I have a pickaxe 08M laying around, so I decided to use that. You could use a hex inverter, you know, feedback the output through a cap and then a resistor to ground and kind of make a switching um, square wave type output using that. But, you know, I'll just use this instead. Very simple circuit. Microcontroller, it has its power supply bypass, its batteries here. Problem is, the output doesn't have a lot of current so I had to boost that current with these transistors. I need kind of a push-pull arrangement because I need the circuit to source and sync current. So when the output is high this transistor is on charging the capacitor and when it goes low the capacitor discharges so the current goes this way and discharges goes this way and I connect the scope across the capacitor so we can take a look at the waveform. Okay, now we need to understand the waveforms on the scope, what we're going to see. You'll see a couple different types of waveforms depending on the value of the capacitor. Smaller capacitors have a shorter time constant in charging, so you're going to see part of their charging and discharging waveform. So it's going to be charging like this and discharging like this and again charging, discharging. So you'll see a triangular waveform with a low value capacitor. With a larger capacitor it has a longer time constant so you really just see a flat, you'll just see a flat line now, because capacitors have an equivalent series resistance, when the transistor switches from high to low and the capacitor starts discharging, you'll see an offset. And that offset voltage is because you know, the current is traveling through that equivalent series resistance and causes that sudden voltage change. So you're seeing this, the triangle waveform split by this offset here. So it's kind of pushing this down. Same thing with the larger value capacitor. You'll now see that drop down, but it will be flat. It'll look like a square wave. And again, because the longer time constant makes the charging and discharging ramps look flat, you'll just see that offset. Now, this video really doesn't get into calculating what the ESR is, but it's quite simple to do it. You can just put the scope across this resistor here and measure its voltage. Because you know the voltage and the resistance, you can calculate the current and because you can measure this voltage drop and you also know the current you can use Ohm's law and calculate the resistance very very simple okay so what I'm going to do is set the camera up pointing to the scope and we'll run through some capacitors I guess I should show the circuit here microcontroller and there's the transistors. There's a bunch of other wires because I was playing with some LEDs earlier but you know that's not really part of it. 
Okay, I'll set it up and uh, take a look at some capacitors. Okay, got it set up here. These are the capacitors I'll take a look at first. The lower one is a 1000 microfarad Nichicon. I think it's just regular. The middle one with the black and gold is a Panasonic low ESR 330 microfarads. And we have another 330 microfarads. It's a Zycon, this blue one here. So I'll connect the Zycon up. And there you can see kind of a square wave. You do see some notches. There is some inductance. But you can see the offset there. We're at 20 volts per division. And if I move that, eh, we're a little under, maybe like 17 millivolts of ESR there. Now let me try the 1000 microfarad Nichicon. And that's better. It's a little bit larger capacitor. It's about 10 volts of ESR in there. The scope's not triggering because of the smaller waveform. Lots of noise. Now let's try the low ESR Panasonic. Much better, isn't it? Well, it's probably like, I don't know, five. Five millivolts. So it's very low ESR. So, you know, you'd use those for example, in a switch mode power supply, because you have those heavy switching spikes, that can heat up a higher ESR capacitor. And also, it let more of the switching noise through. Now, you do see kind of these spikes, and that is due to inductance. You're going to see that pretty much when you're testing capacitors this way. But just so you know, there is some inductance in these capacitors. Now I'm going to take a look at some smaller capacitors. Let's take a look at this 1 microfarad. It's a 50 volt 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Wow, that's awful. I have to turn the scope down. See, you can see the charging and discharge waveforms, but there's this big offset, ESR offset, 100 millivolts per division. So we got one, two, three, you know, a little over 300 millivolts across the ESR there. And I'm not sure what the notches are. It might be the switching action. Where it actually switches, there's probably some inductance in the circuit here. Now, this here is a film capacitor. It's also one microfarad. Same value. Look at that. All you're seeing is the charge and discharge. There's no offset. Let's, let's magnify it that. Now you are seeing some spikes from inductance. Let me stop that. It's kind of unstable. You are seeing probably from inductance these switching notches here. But really, there's no offset. Nothing really you can measure. So 
So you can see a huge improvement. When I was a kid, I used to use these across amplifiers, audio amplifiers, like the LM386. I can see why you don't want to use that. Not good. Okay, last but not least, take a look at these film caps. They're both the same value, 220 nanofarads. But the brown one is a film cap, and the yellow one, the small one, is a ceramic capacitor. So first, with the film cap, again, we don't really see any offset. The ESR is not really there, but there is some switching transient going on there. So now let's switch over to the ceramic capacitor. Much better. You don't see that switching transient now. You just see the charge discharge. A little bit rounded over, but you know that there's no more spike anymore. So ceramic capacitors make excellent power supply bypass capacitors because they get rid of that switching noise that can end up on the supply rails. That's why you see them right next to the chip. They got to be real close to the chip with short leads. You have to, you know, proper ground layout and all that stuff I always talk about when building amplifiers. In fact, a lot of the high speed op amps even used for audio they tell you right on the data sheet that you should use ceramic capacitors for bypass now when selecting a ceramic capacitor to use as a bypass you want to select the proper type because you know there's all kinds of different types of ceramic capacitors you want to use a class 2 type i use the x7r because they tend not to vary a lot with temperature you know, if you're using a bypass cap and the temperature changes and your capacitor goes out of spec, you can lose some of that filtering quality of the cap, you know, getting rid of those spikes on the power supply rails. Well, hope this helped you out, and thanks for watching. Well, hey guys, today we're going to talk about capacitor ESR. Maybe. Oh, Snickers, you picked a fine time. I guess I should show that. Jeez, I can't even talk.